Wow, thank you once again for joining this first Little in IT Foundation TTT webinar. I am Aurélie Doucet, Product and Solutions Marketing Manager at Atipreneurs, and I would be your host and moderator of today's webinar. After the successful launch of Lita, Atipreneurs is now offering training content for Lita Lean IT, and we're organizing these train the trainer sessions to get you up to speed and comfortable using our content. It is your chance to be among the first to introduce a global standard for Lean IT education and certification in your market. It is an exciting opportunity for you, and we are committed to helping you leverage the power of Lean. So let's get started. This session is going to be a two hour session. So if you have any questions during the webinar, feel free to write them in the chat box and we'll answer your question after the webinar. So today I have the pleasure to be joined by Debra Burton, our channel marketing manager at Entrepreneurs, and Nadine Fraun, our master trainer for Lita Lean IT. So um, these are our first TTT session. So um, to help us improve on the quality of these webinars and so we meet your expectations, um, that would be very useful and uh, for us. And also maybe you can share your expectations of these TTT sessions. So during the webinar, we invite you to um, write down your expectations by joining these CTT sessions. So you can write them down in the chat box, so we'll collect them and then we'll analyze them further when we develop future TTT sessions. So uh, in today's program, um, Debra will uh, give you an introduction of entrepreneurs and our services. She'll also explain who is LITA and um, the LITA Lean IT certification scheme. She will cover some useful logistic aspects on instructors' accreditation requirements. Then Nadine will be delivering the proper TTT session, where she will walk you through the LITA Foundation program, the um, structure of the course, the exam, and some tips on how to best deliver the course. So with no further ado, I would like to invite Debra to start this session. Thank you, Arlie. So, as Arlie mentioned, um, my name is Deborah Burton, Channel Marketing Manager here at ITpreneurs. Um, many of you uh, probably know me because I have been uh, driving the um, the launch events uh, for Lita, and you've been probably receiving lots of emails from me. But I'm here today with my Lita hat on, as well as my ITpreneurs hat, and I just want to say welcome uh, to all of you from ITpreneurs. This is our our group. Uh, it's a nice day in the Netherlands. I can't say that for uh, uh, for uh, today as we're having lots of storms but again uh, just take a look at our team and we welcome you so what I'd like to do is spend some time talking to you about how we can help you accelerate your training business uh, we are an I we are an IT best practice content company uh, we our our content is used in over 120 countries across the globe uh, and it is available in 15 different languages so what I want you to take away from it, particularly for those of you that are new partners to entrepreneurs, is that we have an extensive library of training content and we are a business to partner organization. And we have offices in 14 countries, but we work with partners in over 80 countries, which means that you will you have the support that you need and we're in a position to help you with that. So let's talk a little, a little bit more about how we work. So we work directly with the framework owners. We have strategic, we're a strategic partner of Axelis. We are a founding member of the Lean IT Association, and we have very good relationships with all of the framework owners that are the owners of these best practice frameworks. Then what we do is we go and we build out the content. We build the courseware, the manuals, the exam uh, material materials, the uh, delivery support materials. We build go-to-market materials for your sales team. We put it all in a package so that you can quickly go to market to promote your new portfolio. 
I mentioned earlier that we have uh, literally thousands of titles in our portfolio, but we've designed these specifically for the requirements of our partners. Some of our partners only deliver classroom. We have partners that also do virtual classroom, e-learning. We have some partners that only do business simulations. Some of our partners really like to promote blended, a bit of classroom as well as uh, online learning. We're also trying to make sure that we're innovative and we're driving and staying with the times. So all of our courseware we also offer in the form of eBooks. And I already mentioned the uh, marketing enablement that's available for you. Now, it wouldn't, I wouldn't be doing ITpreneur as a service if I didn't talk to you, our partners, about our value proposition. Internally, we call it the four C's. And if you talk to anyone in ITpreneurs, they would be able to share our four C's, our value to our partners. I already mentioned the comprehensive library. There are also some unique titles that we offer uh, for our partners to give them a competitive advantage. Um, the, the, the next C is around convenience, uh, which is making sure that our partners have the support they need when they need it. So we have a 24 uh, uh, by 5 support or operation uh, available so that when our partners have a question, um, they're getting their answers in their time, whether it's a marketing question, questions around exams, question around accreditation, we have someone that can support them. The next C is cutting edge. We really strive to be first in the market. And we do that by working again with the framework owners. But if we find an area that there, there is no framework or there is no best practice there, we want to help drive and build that market. Thus, that's why we're a founding member of the Lean IT Association. And, and the next is content savings. So in the past, many of our partners really felt the requirement to develop their own content and then maintain that content. And they found themselves in a vicious cycle of content development, content maintenance. So saving, cost savings, that last C, is very important to us because we want to ensure that our partners have the ability to do what they want to do, their day jobs, and that's being um, the first and leading uh, IT training and consulting organizations. The last bit I want to talk about, just in a little bit more detail, particularly for those new partners uh, that are on the line. For our existing entrepreneurs partners, you're already aware of the marketing services that and sales service marketing and sales tools we have available to you. But for our new partners, I really encourage you uh, to join me for a new partner orientation session. I'll talk to you about the entrepreneurs ecosystem, how you can maneuver that so that you can get a good fast start with your new lean IT portfolio. Portfolio. I also want to mention to all of you on this call the fact that we will have uh, sales enablement trainings that I have built, a, a how to position and sell lean IT sales training that I can deliver directly uh, to your sales teams to get them up to speed. I've also created a marketing in a box for you to easily go out and promote your lead offerings to your clients. So please do reach out to me. I'll be reaching out to you as well. But you can reach me at deborah.burton at itpreneurs.com. Thank you. Wow. Thank you, Deborah, for this uh, nice and sweet introduction of itpreneurs. So uh, now, uh, can you maybe explain what are the requirements for our instructors to get certified to deliver Lita in IT Foundation? Certainly. So um, switching gears a little bit, um, the focus of this TTT today and what we're going to be really uh, honing in like a laser for you is what are the components in the ITpreneurs courseware. We're going to walk you through those training components and, and Nadine is going to provide you a really in-depth review of the course syllabus about Lean IT. Uh, she has some really interesting tips and tricks uh, for you. Um, there will also be uh, some frequently asked questions that uh, we know have come up via the emails that have landed in my email box, uh, so we'll be addressing some of those. There will be time for questions and answers during this TTC. What um, Aureli uh, said is true. Just please put your information into the chat box and we'll make sure that we cover those during uh, this session. You know, 
the important thing that we want you to take away is that the best way to engage in this course delivery, what some of the challenges you might face with it. And Nadine, being a, a master trainer who has delivered lean IT for many, many years, uh, will walk you through that. Now, before the TTT, you should have received access to your instructor package. But what I know for sure is that we had such a tremendous response from the, the, the interested parties and these TTTs that we were not able to get all of the instructor packages out to you before this TTT. What I want to ensure you of is that you will be receiving that TTT, I mean, that instructor package. So um, if you receive the instructor package and if you had any problems uh, with downloading it, please contact our service desk at service.desk at itpreneurs.com. Um, or if you uh, have questions for our support team, please con contact them at partner at itpreneurs.com. Also, if you haven't received the instructor package, you can also use partner at itpreneurs.com. So let me talk to you a little bit about the accreditation process. So the way this is going to work for all of you is um, at the end of this TTT and the next day or so, you're going to receive a voucher so that you can take the foundation exam. Now that voucher is um, available and is um, usable until the end of August. Um, you will receive this voucher in the form of a web proctored exam within uh, the next couple of days. As soon as we finish this, we will be contacting the exam institute that will then be sending you these vouchers. In the event, in about two to three days time, if you have not received your voucher, please just drop an email to partner at itpreneurs.com and we'll make sure that you get that immediately. For those of you that are participating in this TTT and you're already the holder of a lean IT certification, then there's really uh, not more that you need to do. But what we do need you to do is just send your updated CV, your lean IT trainer certificate from either APMG or Exxon, and any additional related certification that you have to ITpreneurs and we'll make sure you become accredited. And you can just send that again to partner at itpreneurs.com. Now, I wanna also uh, take the opportunity to talk to you about the training requirements. So you're participating in this TTT, but LIDA has some specific training requirements to become a LIDA uh, um, trainer. So in order to become accredited, um, you must uh, be associated with an ATO, and you are. You are, you are the reason you're training, uh, uh, attending this TTT is you're associated with us ITpreneurs. But you, you must hold the Lean IT certification, um, and you also have to attend the training uh, with a, um, pass the training with a minimum of a 75% pass mark on the foundation level. Now that is a different requirement, and we'll cover this again later in the presentation. For our trainers, LITA uh, mandates that they must pass with a 75% pass mark, where the students that you'll be teaching can pass with a 65% pass mark. So that's important for you to keep in mind when you're uh, planning to take the exam. Uh, also, I think it's really important uh, that uh, transition arrangements uh, will be provided for trainers that are accredited by APMG and Exxon before um, uh, March 1st of 2015. So uh, you will continue to be approved uh, for the valid period of that accreditation. And then you can re-accredit according to the new LIDA standards uh, when that um, when that expires. Okay, uh, so thank you for this. Now um, let's get into 
more details of, of Lita. So who is Lita and uh, what are they offering? What's the certification scheme? Can you walk us through that, Debra? Yes, of course, Aureli. So uh, I don't really probably need to spend too much time on this because most of the folks that are participating in this TTT uh, attended our global launch event or attended our, um, our webinar on how to get started with LITA. But for those of you that didn't have that opportunity, uh, LITA or the Lean IT Association where is a nonprofit organization. It was founded by three accredited training organizations, um, IT entrepreneurs, Pink Elephant, uh, Quint Wellington and Redwood, and three exam institutes, uh, APMG, Exxon, and PeopleCert. And the, the idea there was to, you know, uh, bring together uh, industry standard lean IT reference materials and resources for practitioners and have a certified scheme that everyone could benefit from. So um, what lead... What LITA brings to organizations is the fact that organizations today need to be in control and optimize their daily business. But they also need to innovate on their business models and their technologies. And Lean IT offers a strong, well-founded solution for both of these challenges. Lean revolves around principles for operational excellent customer centricity, for uh, strategy development, for management of change and transition, for teams, and for individual behavior and motivation. It's about the value Lean will bring to organizations, and that's why we're so excited about this new Lean IT. You know, LITA is a global community, and all of you that are participating in that TTT are now a part of that global community global community. And what that means is we have such a rich, diverse, global set of experts and organizations that will help us co-create and share lean IT practices, uh, provide guidance and standards in the market. So why, you might ask, do we believe in lean? And I, I don't think I have to tell any of you about why you believe in lean. I don't think you would be on this TTT if you didn't have your own personal reasons for it. But we believe in Lean because we feel Lean offers a powerful set of principles, guidelines, and tools that allow organizations to improve their business capabilities and their business outcomes. So we favor the management paradigm of go see, ask why, show respect over command and control. We've true, we trust that um, the focus is on, qual on quality will con consequently result in improved value and cost efficiency. As a global community, we will continue to work together to promote lean principles in the market. And I'm just so pleased that all of you have decided to join us in that journey. So what do we see for the current market of lean IT? Well, you know, when you think about lean IT, I, I can I, I can only share with you from all of the participating organizations and from practitioners who have been associated with LITA um, that we are constantly learning uh, every single day. I'm getting emails, getting contacted from people that are uh, talking about the lean I, lean IT initiatives that they have deployed within many large organizations. And given the significant value that they've seen in these initiatives and of, of how it's created a streamlining in processes, it's driven optimization, it's cut waste, we believe this market is already big. And we believe it has huge growth potential. So LITA is providing you the tools and the platforms that you need to leverage this opportunity and build this market. So let's talk a little bit about what we see in terms of how Lean IT also, you know, has synergy with ITSM and Agile and DevOps, because all of you are probably talking to your clients today about either all of these topics or at least some of them.
So, you know, the lean approach is the basis of Agile. Lean tells you how to op optimize that end-to-end -end process that allows for value creation. And ITSM, well, that's pretty much talked about the what methodology of an IT organization. How should I structure my processes? You know, how should I handle my incidents? How do we figure that out in a, in a, in a, method, a proven methodology? And if you think about lean, it, you can, it's considered as the answer to the how. It can be the how it can be done in really the most effective and the most efficient way. And, you know, there are lots of organizations out there that have adopted continual service improvement framework, and Lean can fit in there as a large part of the toolbox that you need for continual service improvement. And let's not, let's not miss out on DevOps, you know, um, the, the, the focus on improving collaboration between developers and operations is key. So the, the synergies that are there with Lean and these other important frameworks, and I, and I encourage you to, when you're talking about Lean to your customers, to also talk about all of these cross synergies. Now let's spend some time talking a little bit about the uh, four distinctions, the four certifications. Now, as you can see uh, from this slide, um, the foundation level is um, really uh, the, the first step in the certification process. Then it goes to the practitioner, which is Lean IT Kaizen Lead. From there, there's the professional level, which is Lean IT Leadership and Lean IT Coach. Why don't we talk about these in a little bit more detail? So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on Lean IT Foundation because the reason you're here today is to hear from our master trainer, Nadine. But I will say that the target audience is just like for just about any other foundation course that's out there. It's for anyone who's interested in getting a better understanding of Lean IT and providing them that uh, understanding of the concepts and what's uh, in, in, uh, a part of that. The exam is a closed book format with 40 multiple choice questions. The passing score, again, for the attendees is 65%. But you have 60 minutes to do the exam, uh, and it's uh, done um, by a live webcam, the proctoring. Two-day course, no prerequisites. And Nadine will spend a, a quite a bit of time talking to you about that. So let's go to Lean IT Kaizen Lead. This is going to be available in Q4 of this year. And this program, again, is at that practitioner level. And it's going to provide uh, really the practical hands-on training around teaching and defining and facilitating Kaizen improvement initiatives. It will be a three-day training program that will be followed by the certification exam. Now, the prerequisite for this is Lean IT Foundation, but the audience is really targeted for those people that are in the organization that really want to understand how to define and lead and facilitate Kaizen. So it can be departmental um, participants, designated team members, anyone who is the advocate at, at really promoting Lean principles and practices within that group. So can we go to Lean IT Leadership? Lean IT Leadership is also available in Q4. And um, Lean IT Leadership is really focused at and designed for the champions of Lean IT initiatives. It really provides that extra knowledge, that extra um, advanced uh, 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 information, content around lean IT principles that will allow the person that's delivering the leadership program the type of understanding of the topics like leadership of lean IT initiatives, the change drivers involved, the imperatives of such a program, and, and discuss the long and lasting impact of lean principles within an organization. This is also a three-day training program followed by the certification exam. And again, here, 
the, uh, the prerequisite is Lean IT Foundation. So a person can actually get take Lean IT Foundation and then go directly to the professional level for Lean IT leadership. Uh, Lean IT Coach uh, will become available at the beginning of Q1 2016, and at that time, I'll be able to share more information with you at that time. So thanks, Aureli. Great. Thank you, Debra, for this uh, introduction of Lita Lean IT. Now, um, I'd like to invite Nadine, our master trainer, to start on the, on the real part of the TTT session. But uh, before that, let me introduce Nadine to you. So Nadine is an experienced trainer and manager in process and service management, organizational change, and business development. She has fulfilled a variety of roles and has extensive experience in international organization in private and public institutions. She is um, an expert in organizational change and specializes in identifying business needs and translating these into various types of solutions. She has profound knowledge and experience with improvement and development projects on all levels. She has set up, led and coached diverse multicultural projects, business operations and teams. She has a master in management of organizational change. She is an ITO expert since 2000. She's done the Black Belt Lean Six Sigma program and is accredited to give courses in ITO, COVID-5, ISO 20K, Business Information Service Library, BITO, and Lean IT. So before we start this session, um, I would like to know uh, about your um, experience in Lean IT. So Nadine has an understanding of, of, of the audience today. So let me launch this quick poll. Um, so what's your experience in, uh, in Lean IT? Yes, I am a Lean IT or Six Sigma trainer. No, this is brand new to me, but I have an experience in ITSM. Um, or oh yes, I'm a bit familiar with the topic, but not real experience. All right. So let me close the poll now and let's see the results. All right. So most of you actually don't really have uh, an experience in Lean. It's brand new to you. Um, then some of you have uh, experience in it, 32%. And the minority of you are familiar with the topic, but not real experience. All right. So with that, um, Nadine, I'm going to hand it over to you. Thank you very Thank much, you very much. Aurelie. Aurelie. Well, welcome, well, everybody. welcome, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here and uh, share my experience and knowledge on this topic with you. Uh, it was interesting and also very important for me to know how many of you had experience or have experience, I should say, with Lean. And um, as I saw from the poll now, the majority that is present here today uh, don't. So I will try to respond and address your, your issues and your questions as well as I can. Um, we will start so that you have an idea. We will start with... Uh, the setup and the organization of the course. Uh, there are some general aspects there, so I will talk a bit about, well, when you start and what the controls are during the course and how you make an attractive course. Of course, the experienced trainers will know this, but it is important to mention these aspects. So that's the first part. And then the second part, I will go more in depth I will go through the modules, I will talk about which topics are addressed in these modules. Of course, this is not a Lean IT foundation, so I have to restrict and limit myself to how much I say, but I will try to do it as complete as possible. I will also talk about the exam and the exam preparation because, of course, the students that you will be having are learning a new topic and are doing an exam and they are always a bit nervous about the exam so I'll give some tips and tricks and then we have some frequently asked questions. 
So that is the structure of what I will be doing uh, now. And we start with this first slide, which is starting the course. Um, of course, you should always check if they have their material. Um, and what, what actually is important here is to know your audience and to know which students you have in the class. Why am I saying that? Apart from, of course, their name and their roles and what they do and what their responsibilities are, I would like to highlight the last three bullet points. And specifically the one that talks about, which states the frameworks and methodologies that the students are familiar with. Why? Because this will give you, as a trainer, a good indication of uh, where your students come from because you can use examples, for example, if they are familiar with ITIL, use examples from that or use examples from COBIT or project management methodologies and then take them from there, from their common territory to uncommon territory. That helps because then it's not so completely different for the students because linked IT actually is quite different. And why am I saying that? Because it has a completely different approach. And what I would like to highlight here is that we are not talking about a new framework. We're not talking about a new methodology. What we are actually talking about is a new approach and a new attitude on how we organize things within our organization. And um, this is important to state right at the beginning of the course because from my own experience, I get quite a few students who will say, oh, we have another framework and how does that fit in? And it's just one framework after the other. And what I always state here is no, it is not a framework and all the frameworks and methodologies that you are working with now are fine and good and necessary. What the big difference is with Lean IT is that uh, I call it the missing link. Why do I call it the missing link? Because it is a Lean IT actually approaches and it's the first um, well, now I'm going to use the word framework, which I did not want to use, but you could say it's the first approach to the people aspects in an organization. And within IT organizations and organizations that are familiar with ITIL, we know about products, we know about processes, we work with them, uh, but we never really, and of course there are exceptions, I don't want to offend anyone, but we never really... Um, talk about the people aspect. We will talk about skills, but how to actually manage, and I call it the people factor within an organization, and how do we get people to really have the right behavior that we want so that we provide quality to the customer is something that is not addressed in other frameworks. It just states, oh yes, it's important to have the right behavior, but it doesn't tell you, it doesn't give any indication how you get there. And that is the big added value of Lean because it addresses that. And when I get into the content of the course, I will dedicate more time to that, but the actual core of Lean IT is attitude and behavior. And all the other modules and all the other topics that you talk about are derived, you could say, from there and get meaning because you have a certain approach to how you do things. So, um, conclusion, it is important when you start the course, I would say to really check what the background is and what knowledge your students have so that you can use that to set expectations and also to know what kind of examples you can use. And then the last bullet point is, well, it's a bit giving the overview what you will be doing the coming two days and not just what you're going to do, but why we are doing it this way. So actually the two days of the foundation course is going through the modules, is going through the main aspects of Lean. 
and we will get to that. And that is the logic, that's the structure of the course, but it's good to explain that to them so that they understand where they are. And during the course, before I go to the next slide, it's also good to occasionally, uh, after you have um, talked about one or two modules, to fit it into that overview and say, okay, where are we? And why are we looking at it in this way? So that will help them. So that's the start of the course. If I go to the next slide, we have some general um, things I would like to address, but they are important. Uh, controls during the course. Uh, very important is time management and expectation management. I've talked about expectation management in part. Time management, of course, is very important. Um, the agenda helps you. We will get to the agenda. The agenda states very clearly how much time you have per module. Um, and it's 30 minutes in general, and then you have a time to do an exercise. I, I won't talk too much about that right now. There's another slide on it. But I would like to indicate that the agenda is a guideline. So if you think you should dedicate more time than the 30 minutes, go ahead. No problem. Yeah. And of course, if there are a lot of questions or Arg well, arguments is a strong word, but discussion going on, um, experienced trainers will know how to kind of stop that. And what I always do is I invite them to continue with this during the coffee break, and it, and it usually works. And then you're in a more informal environment, and it's a bit easier. Going to the next slide, okay, expectation management. Um, yes clearly set and define the expectations, write them down. Write them down because it also helps you as a trainer. You can get, well, lost sometimes. I would say you're enthusiastic and you're teaching. Um, so it's good to know what are the expectations the students have. They might have unrealistic expectations regarding the course, so it's important that you talk about that right in the beginning, that you can correct that and of course, address those expectations if that's possible. And the second bullet point is something that I would like to stress, which is you the students are there to learn and to prepare for the exam. You would say, well, yeah, that's logical. But um, from my own experience, I see that a lot of students really come focused on the exam that they have to do. And of course, doesn't matter how long we've been here and, and how old we are and how experienced we are. We're always nervous when we have to do an exam. So they could be very focused on that. That's fine, but uh, we should not forget that the students are there, first of all, to learn, uh, to understand the concepts with the exercises. I always call it to play with the concepts and really integrate them. So it's important to have that time, and that's why time management is also important, apart from preparing for the exam. And of course, it's important to mention right in the beginning um, that there is a mock exam there is, there, the, with the uh, answers and the explanation, which we will also do together, or you can give them homework, a couple of questions, and then the next day you go through them and that will settle them a bit and, and you can assure them that they will be well prepared for the real exam. The third bullet point is also something that I would like to stress, which is yes, uh, the teacher has, uh, the trainer has a responsibility in preparing uh, the students for the exam and explaining things uh, clearly and correctly, but of course students also have to study. So if you want to pass the exam, first of all, of course, you have to pay attention during the class, but go through the material and study. Uh, if you, we cannot guarantee that a student will pass. He, he will or she will have to do his or her part. So that's also good to mention. Okay, um, before I go to the next slide, it can also be useful, or it is very useful to ask feedback from your students at the end of the first day. I actually do it during the day. I ask them if I'm going too fast or too slow or if it's all clear. That enables you, this is also very lean IT, uh, to correct and to improve as you go along.
Okay, we go to the next slide, which is uh, again controls during the course. I think all experienced trainers know what to do with difficult learners. Um, the word is a bit, yeah, it implies certain things. Uh, you can have difficult learners because they just need more time. Uh, you can have uh, difficult learners uh, because they're not motivated or their boss sent them to the course. I actually ask that question directly. I ask students, are you here because you want to or were you sent? And that gives, and if you do it in a nice manner and you make a joke, you get, uh, you get the answers back, but that will also help you to manage this. And um, humor is always very important. So if you see that you do have difficult people for whatever reason, um, try not to have these discussions during the class. And if it's necessary, you can talk to them during a coffee break. But in general, I think uh, the, the trainers present now will know how to manage this and what to do about it. All right, those were the controls. <laughs> of course, we want to make it an attractive course. I already talked about humor. That's in F, very important. Uh, what is also very important because we live in the PowerPoint age that all presentations are done with PowerPoint, but it can be very boring at a certain point. Boring for the students and boring for yourself. So to keep the attention of the, of the, of the students, I highly recommend rotating uh, your teaching style. So yes, using PowerPoint, using the flip over, most people are visual, so draw. You can draw on a flip over. Um, personally, I give a lot of classes just by drawing. I, I draw and then I have the story around it and I'll, and I'll show some uh, PowerPoint slides. This is just my experience. Of course, you're absolutely free to do as you'd like. But uh, my experience is that it helps. Um, yes. I already talked about the theory, you could say, so lecturing. In your agenda, you will see that it's planned for 30 minutes. I actually put here 60 minutes. I think you can, it depends on your audience. If sometimes, and that's why it's important you ask the questions in the beginning and you know what kind of people you have in your class. Some people just need more explanation or you have to go through it longer, so take that time. So the agenda with the 30 minutes is a guideline, but if you see that you need more, go ahead. There are plenty of exercises to do, also they are a guideline. You are free to use them as you like. Sometimes I just use a few and what I do is um, what I see, what really works and what students like is that I ask them to relate it to their own organization, especially when you have several people from the same organization, but that's not even a, uh, necessary. You can do an exercise and you ask them to relate what you have just explained to their own organization and let them give a presentation or you do a discussion something that is fun to do is because the people that you have in your class are usually the first people that have done lean IT and uh, of their organization and they are the ones who are actually going to try to sell the added value of lean IT within their own organization so help them uh, selling it and help them uh, understand how they could present it, for example, to, to management. I, I very often have people in my class who say, yes, we believe in it and, and you don't have to convince us, but we have more difficulty convincing our managers. So you can do exercises with that and help them out and divide the class in two and have one group who is... Uh, well, not anti-lean, but who have been doing things as they have always done, and then you have this new group who, who comes with lean IT and have a discussion going on, and then uh, they have great fun with it. So yeah, fun is very important within a class. Laugh a lot is very good. Um, in C, I would like to highlight that. Use your voice. 
uh, apart from just going click, click, click through the PowerPoint, which I have already mentioned. Um, yeah, use that that powerful instrument that you have as a trainer and, and try to avoid being monotonous. Uh, you can use, you can be louder, you can be softer, you can uh, even ch kind of change the way you bring things. Uh, sometimes you will talk faster or slower. It's also a way to maintain, of course, and uh, keep the attention of your uh, students. And uh, an important part there is also the power of silence. It's, also, it's, it's a way to get their attention, but also give them time to digest what you have told them. The lean, when we get to the content of lean, you will see that it's very new in general. There are a lot of new things. And uh, they need time to digest it. So, so my recommendation is uh, try not to go too fast. Give them time to swallow and digest, and um, then it will stay better with them, and and they'll also feel more secure for the exam. Let's see. Yes, I have think I think I have talked about everything. I will go to the next slide. Yeah. Now we will talk about. Or I will talk about the organization of the course. I'll talk about the courseware, and then we will really get into more the content of the uh, of the foundation course. So, the courseware there is an instructor package. It's very complete. It's very clear. It has comments on what you should highlight and what you shouldn't. I will, of course, also talk about that when I go from module to module. Of course, you have the presentation slides. Um, the participants have their book. I always check the books just to make sure it's complete and it's the way it should be. Um, remember to tell the students that they, within their handbook, they have the mock exam plus the answers to that exam and answers to the exercises. Um, I don't think you will be doing every single exercise. I already talked about that, but everything is there. And you can even tell the students, although you don't do all the exercises, that they can read through them and read through the answers. And that's also a good way to prepare for the exam. So you have everything there. And then you can really start with the course. Of course, it's very important to uh, state and to say what the learning objectives are. And um, that will also sound logical, but this is a foundation course. And a foundation course is always an introduction to something new. Uh, so you cannot really go very much in depth. Uh, for trainers, this can be tricky and I also speak from own experience because having all the background knowledge and the experience you can get carried away and go more in depth than you should actually do so the course learning objectives are important for the students but also for yourself as a trainer and so explain to the to the uh, students uh, what they can expect don't go too fast. I would really dedicate some t uh, some time explaining what the learning objectives are of Lean IT. Um, in the first bullet point, um, yeah, you have the purpose and benefits, and actually in the introduction module, uh, we talk about, or uh, yeah, you talk about the history of Lean, and and I think that's very important. So don't go too fast, I would say, because if you understand where Lean IT comes from, which is very new, Lean comes from manufacturing and Lean Six Sigma. So if you understand where it comes from and why it was introduced and what the important aspects are, it's much easier than to understand what we are doing within Lean IT. So I, I highly recommend explaining that clearly and and not going too fast. So the purposes or the objectives here are this history, the benefits of course are very important, and then you go through your acquiring basic knowledge, general knowledge on a foundation level and you will go more in depth in the other courses, in the practitioner and the professional one, but it's pretty complete, so they, they do need to 
you do need to cover all the aspects. I will go again. Uh, I will go more in depth when I talk about the modules uh, themselves. Uh, yes, I call the Lean IT Foundation. I call it a, also a language course, and it's actually very uh, much the case because um, there are a lot of Japanese terms that are used, and I will already give you a tip for the exam because, and we will see it at the end uh, also in tips and tricks. But these uh, Japanese terms do not come with the translation in English. So that is a tricky one. So make sure that uh, when you go through the material that the students know what these Japanese terms mean by themselves. So if they should be able to recognize it. And, and actually when I went through the material and the foundation material I was surprised to see that that was the case because in the original or I should say old Lean IT it, it came with the translation. So be aware of that and prepare your students for that. Okay, uh, course learning objectives two. Yes, here you mention or here you see mentioned the modules. So we have an introduction. I put attitude and behavior as second in uh, as a second module. It's actually the last module of the foundation course. Why did I put it here? Because it is the core of Lean IT. So what I highly recommend is that you dedicate time to explaining the importance of the attitude and behavior um, within Lean IT, actually what the Lean IT or Lean approach is, because in the next modules, which would be customer, process, performance, organization, and Kaizen, this attitude and behavior influences and defines how you approach the customer aspect, how you approach the process, the performance, etc. So it doesn't mean that you should go through that module first. It's just talking about it and clarifying that it is the core of Lean and the importance. And then in the next modules, when you go through the next aspects, you can always link this attitude and behavior to the customer to the process etc so that's kind of understanding what the logic is of lean and the logic of the course in the second bullet point uh, it's also important to explain how lean IT fits and complements other frameworks I talked about this right in the beginning but um, I recommend going back every once in a while during the course in the first during the first and the second day think okay we're talking about this specific aspect of lean link it to the experience they have for example with ITIL link it to COVID link it to another methodology or framework that they are using because it really helps them to get an overview and a complete picture and how lean helps and what the added value is. So it's not just something else, it's additional. It's an additional added value to the things that you are already doing. Of course, continual improvement, Kaizen is crucial for lean. Uh, I will get into that when I go through the modules, but explain that this is a, a, an important part of the course. You will dedicate time to that. We will get into the plan, do check, act, cycle. You also talk about this uh, when you are introducing uh, Lean. That's the first module about the history. So then you can really talk about that. And last but not least is understand the importance of the role of management. Yes, these poor managers are always uh, criticized for how they do things. Um, here it's also very important to know who is in your class. Do you have people from uh, the operational level, tactical level combination, or do you even have people from strategic level? That will help you approach lean and, and the examples that you use. Um, it's, 
important to mention this because lean will only be successful, a lean uh, transformation, or I don't really call it implementation, I call it transformation, is only successful um, if you have management commitment. And that can be a hollow word, management commitment, but the commitment of mal management within lean is quite big, you could say. And lean is quite, can be, let me, let me say it correctly, can be quite challenging for management. And so it's important as a trainer that you explain how lean can help them actually um, facilitate their uh, employees to deliver the quality service that you want to provide to the customer. So uh, personally, I dedicate quite some time to this. I talk about it during the course, but and I really address it in the last module, which is attitude and behavior, or I should say behavior and attitude. So those are the learning objectives. Okay, the structure, I, I talked about it uh, already, I should say, but you will, we will see it in the agenda. The structure is a part of a theory, if I may call it like that. And then uh, you have exercises or activities. You have questions. You can, that's also a choice the trainer has after every module that you have covered. You could do some uh, questions from the mock exam so that it's fresh in their minds. That's a choice. That's a choice. Uh, you can do as you like. And you have to experiment a bit and see what works for the, for the students that you have. Okay, here is the agenda I talked about. So, day one, you will see here that you have the 30 minutes I talked about. So, you see the first module, which is Introduction of Lean, which is longer, of course. And then you go into Customer, Process, Value Stream Mapping. You go through the modules in general they are half an hour or longer because they have also the exercises. So I actually recommend just uh, respecting the agenda as it is uh, here, but uh, when you have more experience giving this course, and, and again, according to the people you have in your class, you can change this. The important thing is that you cover what you have to cover, and uh, of course do a recap at the end of the day or sometimes I don't call it a recap I call it a bit of a wrap out, wrapping up uh, because people are tired at the end of the day and I do the recap of day one in the morning of day two personally that works better for me my experience is that students are tired at the end of the day and that they're not really open for a recap but again you can decide that for yourself. Then we have day two, so we go through these modules, performance, organization, Kaizen, which is problem solving. There are exercises there. Here, yes, the um, recap is important. I would really dedicate plenty of time. He, I, I actually do it differently than is stated here. I dedicate plenty of time to the re for the recap uh, on day two. Uh, students really appreciate it because after that they have to do the exam. So I can easily dedicate 30 to 45 minutes on day two to the recap and I give them a longer break than, normal, than I normally do before they do the exam. So going directly from the recap to doing the exam, I don't find it a good idea. But again, you are free to do it as you like. Okay, so let's get, well, not jump in the deep, but at least let's go deeper. I will walk you through the modules. Um, again, I cannot give you a complete foundation lean IT course, but what I will do is tell you which topics are covered from the people who are familiar with the current lean IT foundation. This is not, it's actually the same. 
it's the same, but I must say that um, the modules, the topics are stressed in a different way. So they stressed in the sense that some modules get more attention as we get there, I will tell you. Um, and what another difference is, is actually the, the Japanese terms that are used and um, for the rest there is not a big difference. There are some new things. So what I actually, before I start with the introduction, I highly recommend trainers to uh, read not just the material for this course, but read a book. Uh, in the About Lean, I would read a book about Lean Six Sigma because they are very much tied into each other. In your material, in the material that is provided, there are references to these books, so you those are fine. Um, but yes, I would uh, read more and have some more background so that you can, of course, explain uh, the terms well and highlight certain aspects because you will get a lot of questions because it is so new in general for most people. Um, it's a different approach. It's very fascinating and people are uh, immediately want to work with it. So you'll get a lot of questions that might not um, be really for a foundation course, but of course you do have to answer them to a certain degree. So that's why I recommend reading more about it. Okay, so module one is the introduction. Um, as I said before, it starts with the history of Lean. So again, I will stress the importance of that because if you don't know where it comes from, you can kind of get lost. So and that goes for everything, right? So if you know the history, then you understand where you are now. So, so stress that. Of course, we're talking about lean principles. Give them the overview of, of what we are going to cover. And then uh, what we're actually talking about within lean, uh, what is stressed, as I said, was attitude and behavior, but you work a lot with the processes. So what you actually do and what is different uh, within um, and especially people are familiar with ITIL and the process approach. Okay, you know why you have to implement certain processes. And Lean is about, okay, I've implemented the, these processes. How effective are they? And are we really adding value to the customer doing the things that we are doing now according to this process? So what you are actually doing is breaking down the process in activities that uh, you scrutinize and that will enable you to see if you are actually adding value to the customer and if there are activities within the process flow I would say that do not add value and that's when I come to the second bullet point waste. Um, waste is important within Lean and what you want to do is identify those um, activities, and I would say waste activities, that do not add value to your customer. I cannot highlight every single one of them, uh, but what we understand within the IT environment that waiting time when just-in-time delivery is so important is waste. And very often there is waiting time because um, an activity of a process is being done by one team and then it goes to another team and they're not aligned very well. They just have their own way of working and so you have to wait for it. So they have different dynamics. Waiting time, therefore, is waste because you're not, you're not doing your customer a favor because your customer will have to wait longer and it doesn't mean the quality is going to be better. So waiting time, sometimes you need a basic waiting time. I don't want to be too uh, radical, but waiting time in general is waste. Uh, another uh, waste you could say is defects and rework. You could say, yeah, that's logical, but 
if you're very critical and you look at the IT world, we seem to have gotten to the point where we accept that defects are normal. And why do I say this? Well, just look how much energy and attention goes to the incident management process. So we think that's normal. That's just part of the job. That's part of what we are doing. No. If we have so many defects, if we have so many incidents that we have to resolve, that means that there's something that we're not doing right. A customer doesn't want incidents. That's not adding value to the quality of the delivery of the service to the customer. So what you actually want is the least incidents and the least effects and the least rework, meaning just do it right the first time. And that's actually what Lean is all about. Do it right the first time. And what you want to do, and this ties into the other bullet point, which, which says plan, do, check, act. First plan, plan well. Planning doesn't mean you have to plan for months or weeks, but dedicate the time that you have to dedicate to planning something well, or what I call is think first and then do. So plan, design, and then do it. Means execute it, build it, test it. And, what act, and then you can implement it, then you do the check and the act. And what you see very often, and this is very IT, and I'm being a bit provocative, so if you don't agree with me, please let me know. Um, but uh, we tend to go very fast to the doing. And we're halfway through the project and we're like, uh-oh, uh, we didn't think of that. And uh-oh, oops this is going to cost more than we anticipated and oh we have to go back to design it and of course I'm exaggerating a bit only I think but we want to avoid that and and wanting to avoid this this is really lean and a lean approach so lean is all about doing it right the first time and when you make mistakes which is normal we are human beings so we're not perfect um, the important thing is to correct it and not make the mistake again uh, but that means that first of all you have to recognize that you made a mistake and second you have to what you want to do is identify that uh, uh, mistake as soon as possible as fast as you can so that you can correct it and that it doesn't have a negative impact on your customers so that is really in the introduction you you highlight the approach of lean and what it's all about and what you want to achieve okay then we go to the second oops let me see if I can get to the next slide yeah customer so the second module is the customer as I said already what you you're completely focused on the customer and also within the IT world we are used to talking about customer satisfaction and the customer is important I would say that lean IT is really about practicing what you're preaching so it's not just the word customer and then you do however you want to do it as a service provider but it's really starting with the customer and asking the customer and the course talks about how you can ask the customer for example with interviews or you do sessions with your customer to identify what the customer considers value um, how, and then you translate that it's called voice of the customer in lean terms that's the voice of the customer so really listen to your customer and then what you do as a service provider is you translate that to what that means for you within this IT organization and that's the critical to quality tree uh, I can't go too much into it but that is what you cover in this module so what you stress here is the value the importance of the customer that's that's why you exist you could say you exist as a service provider because you are delivering a quality service or a quality product to your customer so that's where you start it has to be very clear what they want you will maybe have to help the customer identify what they want and what they find important help them don't just think oh these stupid customers don't know what they want no help the customer understand what he needs and then 
in non-IT terms, I'm talking non-IT, and then you translate that down to IT with this critical to quality tree. And this will help you understand what you have to do as a service provider. So this is what you talk about in module two. When we go to the next module, we talk about the process. Here also, it's very important to understand the type of people that you have in your class. Um, when you're very used to talking about processes and the process approach, you could make the mistake to think, oh yeah, everybody knows exactly what I mean and everybody thinks like this. It's not always the case. So just check, and it's something that I often do, is I don't start talking about value streams. Value stream is another word for process. Value stream is the lean word that is used. I just check and um, draw on the flipboard and just go through what actually is a process and what is the characteristic of a process and it has inputs and then it's triggered and you have activities and then you have an output which has been defined beforehand and why are you having this output for a customer this sounds very basic but it often is in my experience necessary just to go through that and once that is clear and you can make the reference to their own organizations and ask them, well, what kind of processes do you have in your organizations? You can take them to the lean approach to processes and then you start talking about the value stream because a process is actually a stream that adds value to the customer. That's where it comes from. Um, I mentioned uh, the uh, basics of the process, which you will see in the third bullet point, but that's translated into a well, an approach, lean approach is, okay, if you really want to understand a process or a value stream, first of all, you have to know who the supplier is and then the inputs and the activities of the process, the outputs and the customer. That's the value stream map. And then when you have that, what you actually do is you break it down into the activities of uh, uh, that add value for the customer and the waste. That's when you, and you make this visual. This is very visual. This is something that is covered in the course. There are exercises uh, online uh, you can look up, but also in the material there are some fantastic uh, books and articles and you can see very clearly how you visualize this. Um, so that is what you do. Uh, in uh, module three, it's you have quite some time to cover this because you really have to go through this whole value stream mapping. Very important part, so don't take your time for this as a trainer. Um, yeah, the last bullet point talks about the high-level change process. This process is used because for IT, just-in-time delivery is so important. Uh, makes the, the change process or the change value stream is actually a process that adds a lot of value. So it's it and most people that are in your class will be somehow related to the change management process. So it will be easy for them or easier for them to understand. Okay, if we go to module four, uh, this is another important. Uh, element of lean and the lean approach is yeah of course you have performance within your organization uh, the PDCA plan do check act cycle uh, what you want to do is identify as fast as you can any improvements that you have to make how do you identify it well you need to know what you're doing right uh, so you have key performance indicators uh, you want to make sure that you measure the right things. This ties very much into the, um, the voice of the customer and the critical to quality tree and what you should do as an IT organization. And then if you know what you should do as an IT organization to deliver quality to the customer, then you will also know what you have to keep track of and then what your key performance indicators are. Uh, my own experience is that very often key performance indicators are identified and we start measuring, but they don't really have the link to the voice of the customer. It has become a bit of a standard 
practice without too much thinking about it, if I, if I may say so explicitly. So uh, Lean really helps, and this tool, this voice of the customer, and the critical to quality tree, and then breaking it down to KPIs, really helps you as a service provider to know what your performance should be so that you provide that quality to the customer and therefore if you are not providing that um, performance and that quality what you should improve so that's what you cover in this module um, yeah and the last bullet point that you see there of course it's important the role of skills and knowledge in ensuring performance so what is also very nice about lean and it's very the 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 human factor or the people factor, as I mentioned before, is you want to take advantage to the maximum of the knowledge and skills that you have within the organization. I'm always surprised at how often um, organizations don't really know who they have <laughs> in their company and what their employees are capable of. So. Um, there are exercises and there's a, a tool that will help you get a good, um, not just notion, but know uh, what the talents and the, and the skills are and experience of your uh, employees and, and therefore how that ties into the activities that you are doing to provide that quality to the customer. And that means that you can use, well it doesn't sound nice, but use your your people, use your, your employees in the best way possible and also enable them actually to use their talents. When you have a an organization, this is very lean, where people enjoy doing what they do because they're not just doing what they have to do every single day, but they can use their talents and they can be creative, they're much more productive. This is actually something that that uh, fits into the attitude and behavior um, module, but also here. So usually your people uh, have much more <laughs> knowledge and experience and talent than, than you think you have. And of course, why is this important? Because you want to get a flow in the processes so that you add this value to your customer so you want to use the pool of people that you have in the most efficient way. But then you must know what they're capable of. So that's what this is all about. Okay, let's go to the next one, which is organization. Uh, this is how you are, yeah, how you're organized. That's pretty obvious, how you're structured. And this is a very fun module, I could say, because this is where you talk about visual management. So Lean is very much about not thick reports and a lot of writing and you have to go through it. No, it's very down to earth visualizing what has to be done per day, by whom, and visualizing also what you do per week. So I'm actually talking about the third bullet point that you see there the day board, the week board, you also have an improvement board. This is visual. This is with post-its. This is indicating who has to do what. You use smileys, you use colors. It works like a dream. And that's not surprising because as I mentioned before, people are visually oriented in general, the majority of the people. And it's much easier if you see a certain color or you uh, have this day uh, board which is a daily meeting you do just 15 minutes in the beginning of each day uh, you you go through what you have to do that day you have this board and as you go through the day during the day if I have a problem I could post a post it with the problem that I have and uh, somebody else will read that and then will come over and help me I'm saying it in a very simple way but that's actually what it comes down to so it's making very visual what you are doing during the day, what you're doing during the week. And if there are improvements to be made, that is something that goes into the improvement board. That's the Kaizen. So this is very visual. I highly recommend as a trainer 
to uh, do an exercise with this because then lean really comes alive and they see oh yeah we can use it like this within our organization and my experience is even though they have the lean IT foundation level and they haven't done the other levels yet they introduce these things immediately in their organization and you can so um, I highly recommend paying attention to this and doing doing and actually an extensive exercise with this and you, and you have a lot of fun which is also important. Okay, we go to module 6 which is Kaizen, which is improvement. Here I have a tip for the exam because um, the basis, and this is also Six Sigma you see here, is the define, measure, analyze, improve, control cycle. That's actually the approach to get things done, or I should say the approach of how you implement and introduce improvements. You could say that the plan, do, check, act is a simplification of this in a way. Um, you get questions about this in the exam. You really have to understand, and here uh, responsibility for the trainer, uh, dedicate time to uh, these uh, phases of the of the cycle the tools that are used within the cycle I'm not going to get into that right now because it's, it's quite extensive in the foundation uh, course material but I'm just giving you the tip um, for your students then to um, to go through this, uh, don't do it too fast, and they must know this. They must know which tools can you use in the in the define phase, which tools in the measure. You get quite a few questions about that, so that's that's my tip for the exam. Um, let me see if there's something else that I want to mention here. Well, Kaizen is this is also what Lean is all about because, as I said, you want to get a flow in the process. You will be making mistakes. We're not perfect, uh, but it's the art of um, correcting your mistakes as fast as you can. So actually, making mistakes is permitted. <laughs> you get actually you get a question about this in the exam if if it's okay to make mistakes. Yes, it is. The important thing is, what do you do when you make a mistake? It's important that you learn. That's lean. So learn from your mistakes and then improve. So, and that's what Kaizen is about. So how can we avoid making this mistake again? And this is what you see in the last bullet point. That's the improvement board. And you will make uh, mistakes during the day. So that input on, oh, we, have to, we made a mistake or this is not going well, we have to improve. The output from a day board can be an improvement that goes to the improvement board and that can also happen on the week board. So during the week, you have the week overview, you will also identify as a team that there are things to be corrected. That also goes to the improvement board. And that's Kaizen. So you want to improve and learn from your mistakes and not make them again. And why? Because you're delivering added value to your customer and quality. And then we get to the last module which is behavior and attitude. I always say attitude and behavior but why? Because you start with attitude and that will define your behavior but okay. Um, I mentioned this uh, earlier on how important it is to dedicate time to this aspect way in the beginning because this will define how you organize your processes, how you do your value stream mapping, you're critical to quality. Uh, what I actually say is that that's why it's not a methodology or it's not a new framework. Uh, lean is actually an attitude towards, and I would then call it business life or professional life. I could say life in general, but okay, I, I will not become philosophical. But it's about um, how do we go about things. You will not be successful with the lean transformation in organization if you don't if you do not believe in it. If you don't believe in delivering quality to your customer, uh, then forget about it. It's it's not going to work. And that's why uh, management commitment and that commitment is very active. Eh? That's not an email saying, "Hey guys, this is important." No, management commitment is 
participating and actually having that attitude and showing that behavior. And that's why the Toyota chairman uh, said, I go see, ask, ask questions and show respect. And it's very simple, but it's very true. So this is also something that I emphasize when I, uh, when I teach is if you think that you can just introduce tools, lean tools, and then magic will happen, it's, it's not going to happen. You really have to believe in this on all levels, so strategic, tactical, and operational level. And my own experience is that the most problems actually are felt not on operational level because they are uh, confronting and encounter every single day the problems that they have and they will correct them. Actually the challenge in a lot of organizations is on tactical and strategic level. And this might be, um, sometimes I call it scary to mention so directly, but I think you should as a trainer. You should. You should talk about these things and talk about the challenges organizations will have and that it can be scary because we are IT people and uh, we understand bits and bytes, that's not so difficult. And um, we understand processes, but people are way more difficult to understand and it's scarier because they have emotions. So, but this is something that you have to address. This is something that you have to talk about. So that's what you do in this module. You talk about the behavior, you talk about attitude, it's not about hitting someone on the head when they do something wrong. It's about understanding why things didn't go the way you would like to. Maybe you have to facilitate your people better. Um, and the important thing is to improve. Lessons learned and continue so that you don't make the mistake again. So that is the last module, module seven. And what I would like to uh, highlight for a moment is the exam. I already talked about tips and tricks and exam preparation. What is very, very, very important is that you do the mock exam because you have to get a feeling of the kind of questions that they ask you. So whether you do it all at once at the end of the course, which I actually don't recommend, or according to the modules and the topics that you cover you um, let the students do some sample questions during class. That's also a nice way to kind of not always go through your PowerPoints or drawing. You say, okay, do a few questions, but then go through it together. And the important thing is that they understand why they would make a mistake or why it's that answer and not another one. So that's the mock exam. And then the real exam is, yeah, it's closed book. You have plenty of time. 60 minutes is, is fine. You have plenty of time, and if it's your not non-native language, you get extra time, so they don't have to get nervous about the time. Uh, it is important to tell them, but you will know that as experienced trainers, don't rush through the exam, read the question, read it at least twice. If you have doubts, and this is also a tip. If you have doubts, just leave it because from my own experience is that sometimes as you go along in the exam, you get the question. You get the answer of the question that you had doubts about or it can clarify things for you. So um, this is also a tip, specifically on the Lean Foundation ex exam. Okay, so that is the exam preparation. Um, well, it's clear for students 65 and for trainers 75. So to get that 75, I would say to trainers, it doesn't matter how experienced you are, don't underestimate. Don't underestimate this exam. You might think, oh, foundation, no big deal. Don't underestimate it. So, so do study for it, do read, do make sure you really get it because it's not as straightforward as you think. And that would be a shame. What I'm showing here, so I already mentioned this, but I just made a list. Um, yeah, the exam surprises were um, the Japanese terms. I've put the um, translation 
for the meeting the definition of these Japanese terms here, you will not get this on the exam. So you will read pokayoka, and if you don't know what it means, it's tough luck. Or gemba or kanban. So you really have to know what this is about. So please, as a trainer, tell your students that, that they must know this. And it's specifically in the first three, very easy to get confused. Well, muda, you will know that's waste, but then you have mura and muri, and then it's like, oh, which is which? My way of remembering is mura is with an A, and variability has an A, and overburden has a U, and muri has a U. Very simple, straightforward, maybe stupid, but it does help students to remember. So, these are the tips and tricks on the exam. I think I've covered everything. Um, I hope uh, this was what you expected. Um, of course, I didn't, couldn't go into the complete detail of every single module, but I hope this was enough for you to get a good understanding what is expected from you as a trainer. Um, I think the exam preparation is clear, the tips and tricks, and yeah, we have some common frequently asked questions. I would like to give uh, Aurelie or Deborah, I don't know who, uh, the chance to uh, talk about this. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Nadine. It was very, uh, I hope, yeah, it was very useful for our audience. Uh, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll, I guess we'll know that a bit later. So uh, here I've put down some uh, most common uh, frequently asked questions that we are getting um, about the prerequisites for doing the Lean IT Kaizen and Lead and Lean IT Leadership. Yeah, so as Deborah mentioned earlier, uh, the prerequisites for both courses are to take and pass the Lean, uh, Lean IT Foundation. Uh, another question on um, the, is it required to do the Lean IT Kaizen lead before, to do, before doing the Lean IT leadership? Well, um, it is not, but uh, maybe Nadine can give you a little bit more explanation. It is not, but we advise it. So maybe Nadine, you can explain more on the, on that. Why is it is it it is more advisable to take the kaizen before doing the leadership? Yeah, I yeah, think I that, think that um, um, you don't have, you don't to, have do to do it. it but if you but really, if on, a on a professional level, level want, to, want understand to understand what your, what people, your people could, could encounter, encounter and face, face regarding, regarding the improvements, the improvements that, you that you want to introduce, want to introduce it's, it's highly, highly recommendable, recommendable to also to do also it. Do it. Yeah. So, so, so I would so say I just, would just, just do it. Just do I know, it. know it's one know more it's one exam, exam but, but it will give you very good very insight in what is uh, required. All right. And uh, another question here was, um, what are the requirements for Lean IT Coach certification? Well, this uh, certification is going to be available next year, uh, but candidates will have to complete the Lean IT Kaizen. That would be the, the prerequisite for this one. All right, so uh, now I would like to open the floor to questions. So we've already received a lot of questions in the chat box. Thank you very much for that. We'll try to uh, cover uh, most of them, if not all of them. <laughs> and you can please send your questions as we go along and then answer the, the, the questions. So uh, let's, um, let's, let's have a first look at that. Um, so, um, so Debra, you, uh, we've talked about um, the, uh, the, the, the taking the course. Um, so as, uh, as experienced and accredited trainers, do we also need to take the course first before taking the exam? Um, the answer to that, Arlie, is no. Uh, you don't have to take the course, but you need to remember that you do need to pass the exam with a 75% pass rate, but it's not uh, 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 a prerequisite that you take the course. All right. And how will we receive the, the certificates? From the, from the, yeah. Yeah, from good question. So uh, when you take the exam, the accrediting uh, EI, uh, which you took the exam for, will then uh, send the certificate. Once you've passed, they will notify you and send you the certificate at that time. LITA does not send out their certificates from the uh, EIs. They do that themselves. 
All right. Thank you, Debra. Um, maybe something more about the content. So maybe Nadine, a question for you. Um, is there a specific module we should focus on? Um, um, no, no, they are they all, are all important. important. But remember, remember that, that the, um, the, um, the behavior and attitude is the core. So as I mentioned before, um, it's the core of Lean IT. So that must be very clear. That goes through all the other <laughs> uh, modules, you could say, but they are all important. So, so don't think that uh, you can dedicate less time to the others. They're all important. All right. Thank you. Nadine, another question for you has just come through. Um, is there a recommended external reference textbook, body of knowledge, that's the, that the instructor can refer to enrich his her knowledge about the subject? Yes, as, yes I as I mentioned before, before within, within the, uh, the material, uh, material, there are references, references to books. books. Actually, Actually, those are the, are the books, books and articles that have been used to create um, the training. Um, so you could find it there. There is a lot of other, there's a lot out there, actually. So um, if you're really interested, please feel free to contact me to email me and um, I can uh, send you some specific books and material and links. But there's a quite a lot out there. But it's also, you also have material within uh, the, uh, this material of the course. But, but contact me if, if you want to uh, get more details. I'll be happy to send it to you. All right, thank you. Um, a question for you, Debra. Um, what is new compared to the APMG Lean IT syllabus? Um, uh, well, a very good question. Very good question. So the existing syllabi from Exxon and APMG were reviewed by a group of experts, and a new syllabus was created based on that. And uh, the relevant develop and all the additional relevant developments in the market as well. So um, Lita actually uh, created a panel of experts, went through uh, what was being offered by Exxon and APMG, looked at other uh, developments that were happening in uh, the marketplace, and created uh, the Lean IT Lita syllabus. Great question. Thank you for that. All right. Um, other question, um, Deborah again, <laughs> the first slide on studying the course is not included in the package of, um, of the instructor package or course slide, sorry. Um, is there going to be added somewhere or can we have access to it? So, uh, it's important that you understand that the, 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 the slides that you received in the instructor package are the slides that you will deliver when delivering your training. The slides that we are sharing with you today have been developed for this TTT session. And you will also get a copy of these slides as well as the recording and an FAQ document um, uh, at the end of this session. We need a day uh, to um, uh, work on the uh, conversion of the recording uh, to reduce noise and make sure that it's a good uh, recording, but that will be coming to you. Uh, expect to have it uh, by the latest uh, on Monday. All right. Good. And I, I received also a question about the instructor materials. Some uh, instructors there uh, who are attending this webinar uh, haven't received their, their instructor material package. Um, when, uh, when can they expect it or can they reach out to, uh, to, to us, uh, which email address to receive that? Okay. So for those of you that didn't receive the instructor package before this event, expect that it will be sent to you. As a matter of fact, I, uh, contacted our, uh, partner, uh, support team and they will be reaching out to you. They know who didn't receive it in time. They'll be reaching out to you, um, by the latest tomorrow, uh, to make sure that you get that. For some of you that, uh, I had a question also about, um, the, uh, 
the instructor uh, manual, that should have been included within your um, instructor package, if the ebook. So if that was not there, I do ask you to please send an email to us at partner at itpreneurs.com. All right. Um, let's go back to the content of the course. Nadine, a question for you on a mock exam. Um, are questions in a mock exam identified by module? So it's easy to assign homework at the end of the day, uh, day one, actually. Yeah, good, yeah, question. good question. Yeah, you yeah, can, you find, can that. find that. Um, um, you have the, have the uh, questions for the mock exam, exam, then you have the answers, the answers and also the explanation. Uh, of the uh, answer, and, and with that explanation, that explanation there's a reference, reference to the module, the module a word in the, word the book. book. So if you but want to give homework, to get, uh, get that sheet with answers and explanation, and then you can just choose the ones that you want to use. So yeah, you can find it there. All right. Um, Debra. Uh, question on the next release. So when will the body of knowledge for practitioner be available? Okay, the practitioner materials will be released in Q4. Uh, the body of, the uh, body of knowledge should be available at that time. Uh, I'm not sure of the exact date at this moment, but we will be communing the, uh, communicating this information uh, to all of you as soon as it becomes available. But thank you for asking. Okay, thank you. Um, I also see a question uh, here, Arlie, uh in regard to uh, ordering the course material, the exams. Is the process the same as ordering an ITIL course with ITpreneurs? And the answer to that is yes, absolutely. Uh, for those new partners that are not yet familiar with how to work with ITpreneurs, I do encourage you uh, to contact me. We'll do an orientation session, and I can explain to you very easily how you can uh, order um, exams materials. We have an entire uh, support team that's set up uh, to provide you that information. So uh, again, um, for those existing partners, you work with us as you always had in terms of ordering your materials. And for our new partners, if you're not familiar with how that works, please feel free to reach out to me and I'll make sure you have that information. All right, thank you. Okay, so uh, I think we've, uh, we've got no more questions. Um, so this webinar is going to, uh, to reach its end. So, um, I would like to also, yeah, um, remind you that uh, you can find the FAQ document on the Lean IT Association website at leanitassociation.com. Also, uh, more information on the EIs, on the, on the Lean IT Foundation uh, course, on the, on the certification scheme. So please don't hesitate to go uh, to this website uh, to, as, uh, as reference. I see one more question that came in uh, from uh, asking the question, what EIs will entre entrepreneurs use for exams? We work with um, all of the, the LITA uh, exam institutes. So it is your choice to choose where you'd like to have the exam taken. Thanks, Aureli. All right. Thank you, Debra. Um, so, uh, so yes, yeah, so I would like to, uh, thank you, uh, for, uh, attending this, uh, LITA Lean IT Foundation TTT webinar today with us. Um, Nadine, thank you so much for, uh, for your great and uh, engaging, uh, uh, presentation. Um, You're welcome. Great, welcome. thank you. It was a great pleasure. Uh, Debra, thank you so much for your uh, contribution to it as well. Um, before you uh, you uh, you close the the webinar, um, there is a, a short survey at the end um, of the after just after we close it. Please, um, I encourage you to answer this question so it help us improve uh, these webinars. So we need your feedback to uh, to be better as well as these are the first sessions we're organizing, um, and also we reach your your expectations. So uh, thanks again, and these are the contact details that we can reach. Uh, you can reach us. 
so email address uh, or you can go to our uh, uh, social media uh, uh, sites as well to get more and regular information. So once again, thank you very much and uh, speak to you soon. Thanks, everyone. Really appreciate it. And you will be hearing from us again very soon. And I'll ensure that you get all these materials by the latest on Monday. So thank you again. And thanks, Nadine. Bye now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.